Hi, it's Paul from HowToNetwork.net. Today's Tuesday, I always have to check, the 12th of January, but I know it's 2010. So welcome to the 118th HowToNetwork.net tip of the day, helping you pass your Cisco exams, in particular CCNA, CCNA Security, CCNA Voice, and now CCMP. So uh, first thing is, uh, congratulations to a brand new CCNA Security Engineer, who's a member of the site. So I'll, I'll have to read his name out. Prem Kumar Jeevarathim, I'll flash that up, um, so excuse my pronunciation, but congratulations, uh, passed his CCNA security exam yesterday, that's the fourth engineer I think on the site that's passed his uh, CCNA security. I've posted a brand new lecture, you can come to the website if you're a member, it's about 45 minutes long, and it's a beginner's guide to Cisco IOS. Even if you're not a beginner, I've put in there some tips and some tricks to make life easy for you as you're navigating the iOS and a couple of commands that you can put in to um, to make it easier and uh, more professional as you're navigating between different parts of the iOS. If you're not a member, there's a I'll flash up a link. There's a lecture on YouTube. There's 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes of the lecture. Also, if you haven't seen the tips before, there's a free VLANs uh, lecture you can download from the website. If you come to howtonetwork.net, it says free CCNA VLANs video lecture, uh, and you click on download it now, and you can have that for free. Uh, I do request that you forward it on to as many people as possible um, that you think would benefit from it, so um, you have my permission to do that. The other thing is, I'm looking for requests. Are there any videos or lectures you'd like me to film? and uh, post on YouTube. I'm happy to do anything related to the CCNA. Then we're going to move to CCNA security and voice, CCMP, and then the specializations for voice and security. The other thing is for Platinum members of HowToNetwork.net, I do offer private coaching via email. The only thing I'll say is please send me something that's out of the ordinary and can't be answered on the forum. For example, if you send me a question about why you can't work out a certain subnet, well, that's, that's the sort of question that could really go on the forum. I could answer it, sure, but it obviously takes up time when I could be filming videos for you and other people would benefit from seeing it. Now, if you're stuck on motivation, goal setting, or um, something just out of the ordinary, then all Platinum members have my email address. All right, so uh, there's also the hex, hexadecimal made easy video. You can download the whole lot on howtonetwork.net if you can do... CCNA videos, oh sorry, CCNA lectures, there's so much stuff on here now, I've got a Hex Made Easy uh, video there, otherwise you can watch it on YouTube, you can watch part of it on YouTube. I've got a question of the day, I'm sorry, I'm just going to have a sip of coffee here. Question of the day is, why, why are there loopback addresses in your labs, the hands-on labs? Why not re use real interfaces instead? Well, uh, loopback interfaces are real, but they're logical, they're not physical, so you can't see them on the router. The reason why, there's two reasons to use loopback interfaces. The first thing is, um, they use a lot for testing. So if you're going to install a router into a customer's network, the first thing you would do would be use it in a test lab first, and rather than have 10 or however many networks connected to your router and building the whole a duplicate of the customer's network, we use loopbacks. That lets us test routing protocols and also access lists and other things before we install it. So it'll save you a lot of time and heartache. The other reason is all of the labs we have on howtonetwork.net are designed for people who can only afford maybe two or possibly three routers and one switch. If we started adding lots of fast Ethernet interfaces, some of you don't have, even have those on your routers, it can introduce problems because you then need to plug the fast Ethernet interfaces into switches, which will cause routing loops if, you, if you're not careful. Or if you don't have switches, you're going to have to turn off keeper lives on your fast Ethernet interface. And it's just going to introduce more complications um, into the networks. If you want to use your own interfaces instead of our loopbacks, then that's fine. That's absolutely fine with this. Other thing is, in fact, last thing is the CCNA Security Simplified book to help you get through the CCNA Security Stroke IINS exam will be ready in about two weeks' time. 
so should be roughly 20th 25th of January 2010 as soon as it's ready I'll, I'll post it on the videos here post it on the uh, website and obviously there'll be a discounted price for members of how to network so that's all I've got to say for today um, I hope you have a great day oh and please if you um, if you've got this far in the video please go to the bottom here and give us a rating it really helps promote the site and promote the videos they're all free and uh, hopefully you'll agree they do benefit uh, people to pass their exams okay so see you tomorrow